the director said this was the second largest Holocaust exhibit, military exhibit in the nation, second largest. Some of these photos are just unbelievable. <clears throat> This photo was taken in one of the extermination camps. And so they had ph photographers and journalists that worked for the military. And thankfully they were able to record and document the things that happened there. The world would not have believed. I'm afraid these are ovens. Those were the ones that were still alive when they got into the camps. Those are all IDs of survivors. That helped. But thankfully, here are the men that set them free. The U.S. military. Some of their old paratrooper uniforms. Mountain Division. Paratroopers. Infantry, mechanized. What is that? Italian skull and crossbones flag. Okay. All right, well. He must have been here.
you'll see some Holy Cross stuff, just as you would in the World's War II area. Um, that's our collection. We only have about 25% of our collection now over there. Started with the Indian War, Civil War, and then the World War II exhibit, Holocaust exhibit. Uh -oh. Follow me. Fort Benning. It's the Fort Benning patch. School of the Infantry, ghillie suit, the Carly of Swords, All right, now we're moving into Gulf War One. There's so much to look at. So much to read. You could be here all day. The Grenada conflict. So these are li real uniforms. Real weapons donated to the museum. Here in Groveport, Ohio. Maybe 20 minutes from Columbus, just out in the middle of nowhere, is this fantastic military museum with the second largest Holocaust exhibit memorial. Oh, look at it. Everybody loves this. Tiger Strap camo. It's pretty cool. From the Vietnam. Vietnam War. Cool stuff. Then we'll go outside and see the planes. That's a cool quote. Mm. Ponder the photographs took in here. The faces are fresh and young. The idea is not to remember war, but the price that it cost. The vigilance it needs so that it does not happen again. Those are Hitler dinner plates. And they gave these to everyone in Germany. And it says, uh, the plate says, you gave the leader your vote. Now stand by your word. Wow. Where we just got some old missiles laying here in the corner, huh? And he ended up shooting us down 
to a plane or something? That's a big 90 millimeter shell. That's got to be my <clears throat> my favorite look here. These Apaches with that tiger teeth drawn on it. Maybe not an Apache. AH-1G helicopter Cobras. Okay. Name the snake. Cobras. Cobras. Apaches are newer. Pretty cool artillery. Big combat planes in the back. We gave our all. Each man has his own reason for living and his own price for dying. We went to war for our country, but in the end we fought for each other. Very cool. People don't know this, but feel that pad. Yeah. It's like rubber. It's, yeah, it's definitely rubber. And then the rest is steel, of course. Mm -hmm. On that one back there, it wasn't like that. When it's I came here 23 right years ago, that the military guy that showed me around here, he said that Arnold Schwarzenegger used to sleep underneath the tanks. Yeah. So when these guys would be out in the field, I mean, you don't think about that, he but it makes sense. Some of the, like, bombs or whatever he they had to do to lug in the tank for lifting weights. Right. Because they didn't have weight sets. Dude, there's rubber on this tread too in a different shape. Look at that. Look at that stuff. They That's just wild. don't make stuff like they used to. Rubber nowadays just falls apart. And then what's wild though, if if some of these pads are missing from the track, yeah. it's like it doesn't it doesn't move yeah. right. Gear, you gotta have all your gear oil in there. And just amazing. So many bolts. All these were riveted and welded together. Man, get some Bondo and fix that. No, no, I'm just kidding. Because you want to you keep it as is. Are, yeah. Exhaust. That little head plug in the top. That little chain. Mm hmm. Wow. And this one here, look at this gigantic rocket launcher. I know, man. And it's got a a backhoe on the back of it. Yeah, scoop some people away. Huh? <laughs> yeah. You know what? I bet it dug in the ground. Move them out. So that when it shot, yeah. it didn't propel it backwards. You probably put that down on the ground and it would anchor it. That force would probably send it rocking back. That's wild, yeah. That is wild. That's so cool. That's an electric meter on track. Or some kind of meter box. And really, in general, all these wars were to fight fascism, huh? Yeah. It fascinates me all the how the the craftsmanship of like even these old metal toolboxes, all the rivets, just everything still looks good. Being out here in the rain all these years. Right. We had stuff in our shop that was probably from the 50s, and it was similar to stuff like this. Not tanks, but like just... Flashlight. Oh, nice. I love how the military just labels everything for you. Yeah. Look at that old seatbelt. Headset. Up there. Wow. Has a degree. Headset. Chest uh, hydraulics. Set. So it would raise the, the cannon up. Look at this old screwdriver just laying there. And people's left it alone like they should. Respect, yeah. That's cool. That is cool. Well, you're not going to have good ones coming to this place. Surely not. That's so awesome. 
serial number 01193 911 backwards that folds down okay All right, cool we're not doing a deep dive on these tanks howitzer in other words <laughs> this is what you bring to July 4th All right, would you look at this? Let's look at it. I love the paint job. That's everybody's favorite. This is an old Cobra helicopter. And look where they've just put that good old military tape to fix that hole up. And this is not really steel. You know, it's got to be lightweight because it's a helicopter. But that's just pretty wild. I mean, this you would think it would be made out of steel. And there's steel parts. But it's got to be light, you know, of course, to fly. But that's pretty wild. You would think it would be solid something. But it's got to be light in order to get up in the air and maneuver and zip around. All these attachments for the guns and the missiles. And this, of course, was used in the Vietnam War and beyond. Look at that. <laughs> More of that good old military tape. Exhaust. And that's got to be thin, you know, in order to zip around and fly. That's wild, though. And if that still has the engine in it, I bet it flies right now. Cannon guns mounted up front. Here's a Huey with the 1st Cavalry Division. Transport chopper. Look at all that. Look at all those old seats. Taking the soldiers to the fight, dropping them off, picking up the wounded. Look at that. Turn and pull. They just tell you. They just tell you how to do it. Turn and pull. Fire extinguisher inside. Step here, step there. Slide. It's like the Bible. It, it gives you directions on how to live your life. It's that easy. Look at that. All those sensors, maybe cameras, GPS. Maybe not GPS back then, but what is this? UH Iroquois. Iroquois helicopters. Also a Huey. Okay, this Huey. This Huey had two tours of duty in Vietnam and Cambodia. Note the numerous bullet holes. And this was actually piloted by a guy from Ohio. How cool is that? How cool is that? Look at those little seats. Oh my goodness. All oh, ripped up. It said it had bullet holes. Let's try to find them. <coughs> yellow jacket, but maybe that's one. Maybe they're underneath. Okay, maybe here's one. Yeah, that's something. Okay, there's a bullet hole. There's another one. Sure, there's a lot more. Just not seeing them. Okay, these are cool. Little birds. That's amazing. It's so tiny. We could probably just pick it up from each other. Probably. Yep, little birds. Imagine being in one of these. You probably couldn't be a very good dude. They started using <clears throat> these a lot in the second Iraq war because these are harder to shoot down. All those guys had rocket RPGs. Oh, and these were faster. These, yeah, faster. Maneuver on the way fast. Yeah. It must be so lightweight to have it anchored down at the concrete. And to have it drilled into the concrete. It's wild, man. Pretty neat, huh? Yeah. We got everything anchored down, actually. 
Just how thin that is. Yikes. <clears throat> I've been in a helicopter before. It's a lot of fun. Scary. Twice, actually. Wow. I never have. I've been kind of scared. There's zero room for air in a helicopter. Yeah, right? <laughs> Yikes. Too many people dying. Kobe? Oh, yeah. yeah. Took his daughter and wanted to travel somewhere fast. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. We're going to go eat somewhere.